We are live. Hello, everybody. Well, I see two people in the chat at this point. Looks like we've got Mitch and Seabass. Are we live? Can you guys see us? Can you hear us? Give us some confirmation because I never know with this uh, the YouTube stuff. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It looks like we've got four people watching. Somebody post a comment. There's always a delay in the chat. You ever notice that when you're doing your live streams, like you'll say something and it like feels like it takes forever for them to respond because there's like a delay in the oh. comment. All right, Seabass, loud and clear. And Danny's Guitar Channel. Okay, very cool. All right, well, we got six people watching. So, um, yeah, here I am. Hello, Jamie, with my good buddy, Lester Mitchell, Shred Master Lester Mitchell. Now, Lester, you've got your own YouTube channel, obviously. So um, let, let me just get this out of the way right away here for everybody that's watching and then people that watch the replay. If you are not subscribed to Lester's video YouTube channel, um, you guys need to subscribe and you need to start watching his videos. He just, you want to be inspired. You want to blow it away. You want to watch videos that are, that are going to make you quit the guitar. Well, then you got to start watching Lester's videos because he is the man. Well, appreciate that, man. Thank you for the shout out and thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So how's your Sunday going? Well, not too bad, man. You know, I, I haven't warmed up my fingers at all. So they're like, uh, you know, limp sausages, you know, the feeling. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, uh, Doroteo is in here and Emmett and WJ Cooper. Everybody. All right. Cool. Yes, Doroteo. Uh, coffee this late. This is, it's always time for coffee as far as I'm concerned. Lester, what is your drink of choice? Drink of choice. You know, I'm pretty boring, man. I don't drink anything but like water, maybe body armors, but mainly water. <laughs> Did you say body armor? Yeah. What's that? Uh, it's like an off-brand kind of Gatorade ripoff thing. Oh, okay. Okay. All righty. So, okay. So I think we're going to get this little chat started by talking about like how we know each other and how, how we came to know of each other and this kind of like interesting connection that we have. So when do you think we started, like how long ago do you think we started like uh, like communicating online? Because we, we, we were talking and chatting and exchanging messages online long before we actually met in person. How long do you think it's been? Oh man, I think, was it 2019 or 2020 around there? Somewhere around there, somewhere around there. I, I, I remember it like this. I remember it has to be more than three years ago because I think it was about three and a half years ago that I won the Guitar Max solo contest. And I know it was before that because you're the one that encouraged me to enter the contest. So it could be going on like four years, something like that. That's crazy, man. Where does the time go? Yeah. So tell everybody out there, how you became aware of me. I don't, it wasn't just like you were just, you just found me randomly on YouTube. Who told you to look me up? Yeah, so good question, man. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys don't know this, but Richard and I actually had the same guitar teacher, right? This uh, local guitar hero guy in the same town, I guess, that we were both from originally. And I didn't know that at the time. Um, I didn't know who Richard was or the ball shredders. You guys know him. And, uh, you know, our guitar teacher told me one day, he says, have you heard of Richard James? And I'm like, Richard, Richard James, who's that? He's like, dude, he's famous. Like he played in Tokyo. He's got like a record deal. Like everybody knows Richard James. I'm like, are you serious? That's a, that's a slight exaggeration there, but okay. Yeah. And I thought, well, I got to look this guy up. You know, I got, I got to know who this guy is. And, you know, I think I looked up at the time it was Breaking Point or something. And mm -hmm. uh, I was like, this dude's like Vinnie Moore or Tony McAlpine. I'm, I'm going to subscribe to this guy. So I, I was a big fan since uh, whatever year that was, like 2014 or 15 or something. <laughs> Okay, yeah. So, all right. So, I'm going to explain the story a little bit more here, guys. So, what Lester is saying is that we're basically from the same town or the same area in Northern California. Lester is still there, but now I'm way down here in Southern California. So, we're separated like by 
I don't know, 300 or 400 miles. But Lester still lives in the area where I grew up. Now, here's the funny part. I graduated high school in 1989, and that's when I left. That's when I left our hometown area, and I moved down here to Southern California to, you know, chase my dream to become a rock star, and you can see how well that worked out. But so we're talking 1989 when I moved down here. You weren't even born yet, right? Yep, definitely not. <laughs> Lester, Le Lester, 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 you young whippersnapper, you're quite a bit younger than me. Um, so it's, yeah, we literally, there was no chance for us to cross paths in our hometown because like I said, I moved away and it was probably like a couple more years before you were even born. And even then you were just in... Uh, I wouldn't have known you. I'd be like, hey, look at that baby in the stroller there. He's going to grow up and play the guitar. So anyway, oh. um, yeah, so I moved down here. And then, like you said, Kevin, Kevin was our guitar teacher. I took lessons from him like way, way before Lester did when I first started out. And then years later, you took lessons from him. And he told you, hey, did you know Richard? Look him up. And then you looked me up. And then that's how we connected online. And then we became good buddies. And since then, we've had uh, several chances, several uh, times where when I've been up there, like visiting family, because I still have family. My family still lives there. And when I go up there a few times a year, we've had a chance to get together and we've recorded a, a couple of videos in your apartment. So, yeah, it's been cool. Yeah, definitely, man. It's always awesome to meet, you know, other folks that are into this style of music. Cause, you know, there's not a lot of shred niche fans out there and especially somebody that can play at your level that's pretty right. amazing so so uh tell everybody explain to the audience out here how you got into 80s shred guitar when that is that is totally not your era like you know the 80s that's my era that's my time because i was a teenager in the 80s and that was the thing you know the shrapnel records vinnie moore paul gilbert racer x cacophony marty freeman all that stuff that was at its height Ingve malmstein so of course i was into it because that was at the height of the popularity but for you you know all that stuff was way past by the time you got into music and guitar playing so how did you discover that stuff and how'd you get into it yeah good question man you know when i was younger I, no i was totally clueless on the 80s stuff i didn't know who steve Vai was or you know i, I obviously van halen everybody knows van halen yeah. Um, but you know, besides that, I didn't have any awareness of any other guitar players. So I got into like shredding from like the Pantera days, you know, Dimebag Daryl doing Cemetery Gates and all that stuff. And then people were like, yeah, you got to listen to like, you know, the stuff that Dimebag Daryl listened to. And so some people were telling me, yeah, check out like Steve Vai and Joe Satriani. And I'm like, who? So I looked those guys up and then, you know, obviously stuff pops up on the recommended, like Vinnie Moore and uh, Greg Howe and stuff. And I was like, this is real. Like these people play this good. Like, how does this how does this even make any sense? You know? Um, so from that day on, I was like, okay, big Vinnie Moore fan, definitely going to get into this 80 shred stuff. And well, here, here we are now, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Okay, cool. So you, would you consider Vinnie Moore to be your favorite of that group of players, guys that, you know, came to prominence in the eighties? Yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, gosh, just to pick one, like as my all time favorite, but I'd say he's definitely up there Vinnie Moore is like one of my favorites besides Greg Howe and Tony McAlpine mm -hmm. hmm. how about uh Paul Gilbert the Racer X stuff oh yeah you know it's funny I found out about him later on like towards like maybe a couple years after I heard about Vinnie Moore and those other guys so I was like Paul Gilbert mm -hmm. and then people are like dude Paul Gilbert's like the godfather of shred how do you not know Paul Gilbert and I'm like I, I don't know <laughs> yeah and I know you're you're still not like completely familiar with all the racer x stuff because which i'm very disappointed in you by the way because anyway <laughs> there's been times when i was like oh yeah i'll mention like a certain song and i was like oh yeah that one racer x song or you you know and i assume that you know which one i'm talking about and you're like oh i'll have to check that one out and i'm just like you don't know that's how do you not know that but again in all fairness you i mean you didn't grow up in that era so the fact that you know as many of these guys and you're familiar with that much music being that you were you know born after that all that stuff went down that it's, it's still it's pretty amazing yeah well i appreciate it man and you know 
I'm still really jealous of that picture of you and Vinnie Moore. I was like, oh, when you showed me that. So oh, cool. yeah, too bad. I don't have it ready. I could plop it up on the screen, but um, maybe you're talking about the, the picture when I met Vinny in 1989. It was at the very first, the very first time that I went to the NAM show and I was a senior in high school. And this is so crazy. I can't even believe my dad let me let us do this. And and two other kids, you know, well, me and my buddy, we were both seniors. But the third guy, he was a junior in high school. And my dad let me drive his car with my two friends. I drove in my dad's car all the way down to Anaheim, stayed in a hotel, you know, without adult supervision. I mean, we were almost adults. But anyway, that yeah, that was a crazy story. And that was my first NAM show. And I'm walking, this is 1989. This is the height of 80s stuff. Walking around the NAM show and, oh, there's Vinnie Moore. And he, not only is he there, he's like performing in one of the little booths, you know? So you get to watch him play, uh, talk to him, get a picture with him. So yeah, I got a picture with Vinny. I met Jason Becker and, and Marty Friedman from Cacophony. Um, it was my first time meeting George Lynch, which was just mind boggling to me because he was my all time favorite biggest you know influence at that point and, and you know paul gilbert all these guys just so many rock stars walking around and that was just it was crazy fun time man that's awesome especially you know george lynch and all that too must have been awesome dude it was it was now recently didn't you see steve Vai in concert yeah yeah it's about a i think it's been a year now but that was crazy man i never seen anybody play like that in person i mean besides kevin i've never seen anybody shred uh -huh. in front of me and uh that other guy's like an alien man <laughs> yeah was well, like not only is he a, a great guitar player but he's also a great performer you know he doesn't just stand there and, and shred amazing i mean he's very much is like i said a great performer and he moves around and he you can see like the emotions and just his body movements and stuff and Puts on a very good show. Oh, yeah. Well said. Did he have that big old crazy guitar with like the three necks on it? I forget what it's called. Yeah, the Hydra thing. Out. Yep. Yeah, I think it's crazy, man. He played it live and uh, he was doing some improv on it and everybody was just blown away. Hmm. Very cool. So, okay. Who would you consider... Now, you know, you mentioned Dimebag Daryl, but was there anybody before that that was like, who, you know, who, who was the band or the musician that you saw or that you heard and you were like, um, I want a guitar. I want to start playing guitar. Mm. Who kicked you know, it off? It's, it's going to be cliche sounding, but I think any of the Aussie songs like, you know, Over the Mountain, Crazy Train, all that stuff. I was like, that's that's a guitar. I want to make noises like that. I'm like, how do they do that? <laughs> OK, but. I, how are you getting exposed to those songs? Because that was years after those songs first came out, right? Oh, yeah. Um, so who, 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 who said, hey, check out these Ozzy Osbourne songs? You know, I got to owe it to uh, 104.1, man, that, that classic rock station, because we didn't really get into the newer modern rock stations. Uh, so I just tried to tune into that one. And, you know, I'm always hearing these songs and I'm like, what is this? You know, people are telling me, you don't know what that is. That's that's Ozzy or whatever. Oh, that that's uh, White Snake or something. And I'm like, what? White who? Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. And then, you know, now that you mention it, when I'm the radio stations that I listen to down here, when I'm in my car, um, they're playing, they're still playing classic rock and they're, it's songs from the eighties They're I mean, not all like hard rock and heavy metal stuff, some more like new wave ish, okay. you know, like aha take on me and all, all that kind of stuff. And they're still playing eighties music. So, my kids, you know, my kids are in the car with me and they, every time we're in the car, they're, you know, they're listening to 80s music, whether they want to or not. So, yeah, that's I funny. Man. That. <laughs> so let me say hi real quick to some of the people in the chat. Hey, guys, everybody that's in there. Appreciate you guys for jumping on on a Sunday here. Wasted Dude, Andy, uh, Time Surf and Alien. Of course, Mitch is in there. Seabass. And anybody else, hey, if you're watching, put a comment in the comment by in the comment box, guys, so we know you're there. Mannequin Army, dude. Robert, who else is here? Come on, it says 35 people watching. 
Let me see 35 comments in the chat right now in support of Lester being here. I got Lester on here. Sienna, I could never forget you. Hey, Eric. And I hope you guys enjoy me having like a guest in the show uh, so that we can talk music and guitars and stuff. Usually it's just me talking by myself and talking to the comments and stuff. Um, but yeah, if you guys like this, you know, we'll, I'll try and have more guests on as much as I can. So who else we got here? Mr. JW. Cool. And Rob and Callie. All right. Yeah. He's a regular. RRD. Hello. Hello. Okay. So Lester, tell everybody out there in case they don't know what you do for a job. Because you don't just play guitar at home. You're not like me playing guitar in a bedroom. What do you do to make a living? Yeah, so, you know, uh, full time, I'm a music teacher, guitar teacher here in town. And so, you know, I'm working with like 30 or 40 different kids and teenagers every week. Um, and then I come home and do some online lessons on my days off. So that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> not too exciting. Yeah, but I mean, your your job is to teach guitar and play guitar. So that's pretty cool. And how long have you been like a full-time guitar teacher? Oh gosh. I think I'm going to like eight years now, around eight years. Eight years. Okay. And do you only teach uh, in person at the music store or how else do you teach? Yeah. um, Right now it's my main source of income. Uh, I am trying to get more online lessons. I only have like four or five people that I'm doing online lessons with currently, but, uh, yeah, it's a good start. Okay, so you do you do lessons online. So if somebody wants an online lesson, some you know somebody who's not in your area, um, you can do a lesson like over Zoom or something like that, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and so you're very experienced in doing that. So anybody watching right now, like you, you know, you're interested in lessons, and um, I can't think of a better guy to recommend for anybody out there that wants to expand their horizons as a guitar player um you should definitely get a hold of lester and talk to him about that in fact lester do you feel like giving us a little demonstration of your guitar pyro pyrotechnics what i'm trying to say oh sure man yeah a little sloppy today i haven't warmed up so i forgive the uh the random noises here let's see what we got all right so let's go on. All right. Sounds, hey, <laughs> how about a little more? I was hoping for more than 20 seconds. <laughs> You're like a full. Uh, come on, come on. Show these people what you can do. Right, let's, do the old, uh, let's do the old Michelangelo Badio ripoff lick. Okay. Okay, so hey, before I, before this comment goes away, um, Rob and Callie wants to know what what's the preferred way for him to contact you to set up online lessons. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, if you look me up on Instagram, just Lester Mitchell, or you can uh, contact me via email, which is Lester Mitchell Guitarist at Gmail. Uh, you have those two options. Those are the best ones to reach me. Um, I am on Facebook as well, but people have a hard time finding me on Facebook. Hmm. Okay. So, and uh, Rob, if you, you know, if you're trying to get a hold of Lester and you're, uh, for some reason, you, you can't make contact with him, you can always let me know um, anytime and then I would make sure you guys get connected. So, Mitch, uh, how many students do you have from the music store? Mitch, I think that was a question for Lester, not for me, right? Because he's the one that gives lessons at the music store. So, how many students do you have? Right now, um, if everybody shows up, it'd be about 35, 36 people a week. Okay. Like, you mean per week? Yeah. 
Okay, well, that's, that sounds pretty busy. Paul, Paul says, what's up, Richard? Well, what's up is we're sitting here having a chat with the amazing Lester Mitchell. So thanks for joining us, Paul. All right, so next question, Lester. Um, now, I know we, we both took lessons from the same guy, uh, Kevin, the local, he was kind of the local guitar teacher there. And I only took lessons from him uh, for about three years. And you also took lessons from him. But it seems like you, even after you were done taking lessons from him, you still really expanded your knowledge because you seem to know a lot of things that I don't know as far as uh, modes and theory and, you know, I'll play something and you'll, t you'll be like, oh, that's in the blah, blah, blah mode in the key of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> if you say so. So are you self-taught and all that stuff? How'd you learn all that? Yeah, good question, man. And it's funny you say that because, you know, you know all the all the stuff, basically. You probably just don't know the exact name like that's in the book of it. But you know all the stuff inherently, which is awesome. Uh, so super impressive. But yeah, um, you know, obviously, you know, Kevin showed us only certain things. And so I felt a little limited, uh, especially trying to join bands later in life, because I get asked questions I didn't have answers to. They're like, yeah, we're going to play like in the key of D and we're going to play like a six two progression. And I want you to bust out like, you know, some Dorian or something. And I'm like, oh, God, oh, God, I think uh, I think I'm going to have a panic attack. <laughs> I don't know what that means. And so, you know, I was like, I got to figure this out because I feel like an idiot. Um, so I got some books, did some reading, tried to find some online tutors, you know, that I thought could help me because I couldn't find anyone in the area. Um, and then I took a few different lessons from some guys online, um, one of which was Gus Drax. Uh, he's like a, I guess, a metal guy from Greece, somewhere around there. And that guy scared me, but he was a good teacher. Uh, showed me about modes and picking exercises and stuff. And some other guys kind of showed me about theory a bit more. Um, but it's been a, it's been a struggle as you know, cause in our area, there's not a lot of like options in well, where we're mm -hmm. from at least. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a little hard. <laughs> well, you've done, you've still done amazingly well to, you know, to, to increase your knowledge and learn all this stuff. Um, I mean, we, we have the advantage now that, you know, everything's online. So if you want to learn stuff, you can look it up, whether it's on YouTube or uh, just web pages. And, and so, I mean, obviously you had to do a lot of studying on your own to get the stuff, you know, stuff that I'm not willing to do because I'm just too lazy to like, uh, you know, that phrase, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So I just, yeah, I just play what I play and uh, whatever, whatever it is, that's what it is. So, yeah. Well, you know, I think if anyone could pull off the stuff you do, like that's already an instant win because it's unique. You have your own signature sound. Like if you ever hear, you know, Richard playing something, I'm sure you guys could agree. It's like, oh, that's Richard. You just know it's him. Um, and that's something you can't teach anyone. I don't think just having your own signature sound like that. Oh, uh, well, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, as long as my signature sound is pretty good and doesn't sound like poop, you know, I would want a signature sound that's not good, but yeah, as long as it's good. <laughs> uh, the same thing with your stuff, you know, as soon as I hear you playing, it's like, nope, that's Lester. I recognize it right away. So Brian's Gate wanted to know group lessons are all individual. I think when you do the online lessons, it's individual, one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Jamie said, uh, Jamie bought a lesson package from you. Is that right? Yeah, that is true. Okay, and thanks again. Cool. <laughs> yeah, Jamie has been, uh, I have to commend Jamie because, you know, she only started playing guitar very recently. Um, I think after she started watching my videos and that kind of inspired her, Jamie, you can let me know if this is correct and got her first guitar and got an amp. And now she has several guitars and, uh, practices and taking lessons and stuff. So very cool. Uh, let's see. Okay. Paul says, tell Lester to play some Yngwie Malmsteen. <laughs> Do you know any Yngwie Malmsteen? Oh my gosh. Um, okay, hang on a sec. Hang on. Before you play. Uh, Mitch was reminding me that before you play guitar, you have to go into the settings and the audio and turn off the echo cancellation. Oh, because, 
Yeah, because when you're playing the guitar, if you leave on the echo, echo cancellation, it starts to cut out your guitar, the sound from your guitar. Oh. So go in, take off the echo cancellation, but then when you're done playing guitar, put it back on when we're talking. Okay, you got it. Oh. Like that kind of uh, Malmsteen, yeah, like that harmonic minor thing. <laughs> yes, something like that. That's about as Malmsteen as I'm going to get, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did you put the echo cancellation back on? Yeah. Okay, cool. All righty. Uh, Bad Jake Gaming said he literally got his first guitar about a week ago, and you're almost 48 and just starting this thing. That's great. Uh, bad joke, sorry, bad joke gaming. Um, it's never too late, right? So I, I, I'm assuming, Lester, that some of your your guitar students are kids, but then you also have adults as well, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, I've, I've taught, you know, kids as young as two and three, which is pretty crazy. Uh -huh. um, and as old as probably like 80. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I always say it's it's never too late. Right, it's never too late, and anybody that wants to start playing guitar, uh, yeah, do it. You know, why not? Why not? Um, it does take some practice, though. You know, you have to be able to, you have to be willing to put in the time, and you can't expect like uh, magical, amazing results within you know like a few weeks. And I'm going to be playing full songs, and I'm going to be shredding, and it takes it takes a while, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, it does. It takes time and, and consistency for sure. You know, I've had people get mad, you know, I've, I remember teaching a guy and, uh, you know, he's just learning the basics, like chords. It's like a second lesson. Uh, mm -hmm. he came back on week three and he told me, you know, I haven't learned a full song all the way through. I was wanting to play sweet child of mine, like the whole lead and everything. And it's just not working out for me. I think I'm going to quit taking lessons. And I was like, this is your third lesson, man. You just, you barely got the G chord. That sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, that, that reminds me of like when I first started playing back in the very, very early, like maybe the first year or so. And it's so funny because at the time, yeah, you know, I could barely play. And I was trying to play like a rat song or a Def Leppard song. And I remember thinking at the time, man, I am awesome. I'm, I'm just like, really, that's incredible that I could, you know, and I'd try to like, hey, check me out playing this song. And I'm expecting them to be like, Whoa, that was amazing. And now when I think back, I was like, I could barely play. What was I thinking? But when you're learning and then you learn how to play something and then you play it and you're like, wow, I can play that. And then you, you know, of course you think it's great because you yourself did it. Yeah. Oh yeah. How long do you think it took you? How many years of playing, practicing where you got to the point where now, looking back, now you can look at it more objectively, where like, okay, I'm pretty good now. I can play this fast technical stuff pretty well. How long did that take you, would you say? You know, it, it probably took me longer than it should have because I didn't have like proper guidance um, in the beginning. So like my first 10 years were just like, I don't wanna say aimless, but they could have been structured a little better. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I've been playing 23 years. And so like the last 10 to you know 13 years, I've been having like, okay, I'm going to use a metronome. I'm going to do these specific exercises. I have a structured plan. And, you know, I wish I would have done that sooner. Um, Cause you know, before I could have, sh I could shred and do all that, but it wasn't clean. It was sloppy and it's still sloppy to some degree, uh, but definitely a lot better than it used to be. Thanks to the metronome. And like I said, having a focused practice routine, which I think is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what advice would you give to guys that are, I guess it doesn't matter if like you're, you know, you're just starting out or maybe they've been playing for 20 years or whatever, but they feel like they're just getting nowhere. Like, you know, they're still playing like they were after one year and they're still, you know, just playing really basic stuff and uh, they, yeah, they're kind of in a rut. So what do you recommend for those guys? Oh, you know, a few things. I think one, don't get comfortable or complacent because as soon as you get comfortable, then you're not going to be pushing yourself outside 
that comfort zone, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You used to doing those scale patterns a certain way. We'll switch them up, you know, maybe play them in thirds or fourths or fifths or sixths or whatever. If you don't use a metronome, start using a metronome. And another thing I hear is I use a metronome, but I don't do any subdivisions. And it's like, well, you could do eighth notes, triplets. I mean, you know, there's so many things you could do with that. Why just stick to one one practice regimen when you could do all of it? Um, mm -hmm. So push yourself to do the things you haven't done yet. Always be critical of the things you can do because they can be done better. Uh, and, you know, remember there's 10 year old kids out there that are smoking us like guitar. So we have a lot to <laughs> work on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now this is going to be a funny question, I think. So you give lessons, you have students. Well, we'll try to make this as nice as we can, but what, what is like the most frustrating or annoying aspect of being a guitar teacher? Mm. Well, that's definitely a toss up between either parents using you as a babysitter and nobody calling you when they don't want to show up. Like, you know, I don't mind a phone call if you're not going to show up, but at least call. Mm -hmm. You get so many no call, no shows. And like, then when you call the family, you get excuses that are like, oh yeah, you know, uh, Billy broke both his feet and his hands and his arms and his spine, but he'll be there next week. <laughs> like, Come on. That's, uh, this if yeah. you don't want to show up, it's fine. Uh, but that's probably the most frustrating part, part besides, you know, kids not wanting to be there and their parents just dropping them off to go mm -hmm. run errands, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, how often are, does it happen where, like, you're in a lesson and a student's asking you, like, so, I want to do this. And, you know, how can I do this? Can you tell teach me how to do this? And then, like, you show them or you explain it and then they just completely ignore everything that you just said. And, and like, they don't even do it. You know what, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. How yeah. That happens a lot. I'd say probably like 70% of my students are, are that way. Definitely. Now, is that because what you're explaining is just like, is like so far over their head, it's too complicated or it's just like human nature. Like, uh, no, I, I want you to wave your magic wand so I can just start doing that without having to do anything. Yeah, pretty much. I think I think people expect instant results or they don't realize like the the level of work that they have to commit to something. So that when it comes down to it and they have to put all this time in and effort, they're like, no, there's got to be a secret you're not telling me. Like there's something I, I want to know how to do this, but you're telling me to do this. And it's not it's not leveling up with my my dream or my, you know my idea of what I thought it'd be. <laughs> yeah. That uh, happens a lot. Right. Right. Uh, Brian's gate wants to know if he needs an audio interface to do lessons or, you know, can he just have like the amp sitting there in the room? Would you be able to hear the amp for the lessons? Yeah, that's fine. You could use phone audio or just whatever audio is, you know, convenient for you. Um, I do recommend having headphones. So, you know, it doesn't bounce back like my voice or the guitar or anything. Sometimes it happens with some people's computers. Mm. Okay. So Brian's gate, I don't know if you were um, like, if you have a webcam on your computer or do, do sometimes do students when they do online lessons, do they ever just like they're using their phone to do zoom or whatever? Yeah, definitely. I'll see, you know, people use their tablets or phones and, you know, some people they'll get lazy. They don't want to show me the video. They'll just put on the audio and I'm like, I can't really help you if I can't see. Oh, it's all right. Just, just help me however you can. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, so it's like, you're just talking on the phone and they, maybe they can see you, but you can't see them. Exactly. Yeah. That can be uh, like, that's gotta be frustrating. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Next question. What is the best guitar you've ever owned? What's your favorite guitar that you've ever owned? Would it be like your current one? Mm. Well, you know, I think it's a toss up between maybe that Charvel I had and um, the Schecter. They're both on par, I think, with each other. So I'd say it's a toss up between the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what was your very first guitar? Oh, man. Well, you know, <laughs> I learned on uh, my mother's old acoustic. It was really beat up had rusty old strings you know this is the classic meme right where the strings are like this high off the fretboard and everything's yep. all messed up yeah uh, 
and she was left-handed. So, you know, it was upside down. So I learned upside down originally and I had to like fix everything when I got a right-handed guitar later. <laughs> wow. So you were, so it was a left-handed guitar, but you flipped it around right-handed. So uh, all the were upside down. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, your G looks wow. all weird like that. And you're well, like, you're, you're like the right-handed Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was not fun. That aspect. Yeah. And then did you, after that, did you get your first electric? Um, it's probably like three years into it. I got an electric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you I remember it what it was? What brand? Yeah. It was one of those first act ones. It was what? Uh, first act. Oh, first act. Yeah. Are those the ones that they sold at target? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my first guitar was out of the JC Penney catalog. Oh, there you go. A Christmas present from my parents. I remember I remember having uh this is back in like nineteen eighty two, you know, there's no internet or anything like that at the time and no target, certainly not where we lived. Um but yeah, the big thick JC Penney Christmas catalog, and I opened it to, you know, the page where they had all the instruments and it's like, oh yeah, that's the one I want right there. It was it was ninety nine dollars for the guitar and the little 10 watt amp. That was the combination. I still remember it. In fact, years later, recently, um, I, you can find all those catalogs online and they have scans of all the pages. And I found that page, that same page that I looked at back in 1982. And I'm like, yep, there's my guitar. There's my amp. And sure enough, $99. So the amp, if you can believe this, the amp had no distortion. It had two knobs, volume and tone, and it was just clean. So no matter what you did, there was just, you know, you could make it a little bit brighter, a little bit thicker sounding with the tone knob, but that was it, just a clean sound. for. And that was my only amp for a year or two. I can't remember exactly. Oh, my gosh, man. That's awesome. Your first amp was probably better than my first amp, I'm sure. Oh, man. It sounds similar. Very similar. Yeah. All right, so let's see if there is any uh, questions in the comment. Mitch says that StreamYard would be a great platform to teach guitar, to do lessons. Mm -hmm. oh. So that will be something for you to think about, Lester. Um, guys, if you have any questions for Lester or for me, um, let me know in the chat. Eric says his first guitar was a Sears acoustic. So yeah, similar to my situation. And Brian's Gate had a PV T15 with two single coil pickups. Not three, two single coil pickups. All right. Oh, William says his amp was his stereo. I've done that before. I plugged my guitar into like a regular a stereo. I remember plugging my guitar into my dad's stereo so I could record my guitar, like the cassette player on the stereo. And I'd, there was like a little input thing and I plugged in my guitar. I don't even know how I did that. Maybe there was no distortion then. But anyway, I was able to record what I was playing direct onto the cassette tape. That's crazy, man. I never knew that. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I'm sure it sounded horrible, but that was my first start of uh, recording stuff. Hey, innovation, man. Innovation. <laughs> okay, Michael has a question. He says, what would you recommend to an old guy who wants to play, but is at the level of beginner? I have a good guitar and amp, but I need to have a good starting point. Okay. So where did he start, Lester? Yeah, good question. You know, uh, I'm guessing he's just starting out like from the very basics, right? So learning tab would probably be a good idea. Learning some easy songs like, you know, Nirvana, Come As You Are, or something like that. Just some easy one, two string songs. Um, that would be like my starting place for a lot of students at his, you know, level. Um, then from there, once you learn a few simple one or two string songs, you get to chords, we start learning some chord strumming, some songs in that field. Uh, then we can start working on things that maybe the student likes. So you can look up songs on your own, like on Songster, Ultimate Guitar or wherever. And if you can read tab pretty well by then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good advice. Uh, Jamie wants to know what were some of the first songs you learned? Was it the Ozzy Osbourne stuff? You know, I, I remember looking at the tab. Uh, my stepdad was trying to teach me how to read it. And, you know, it was 
very confusing for me. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't the brightest student, like, you know, in school and stuff, you know, I always had a hard time in math and things like that. So like looking at tab was, <laughs> was a little bit weird for me at first, but, yeah. uh, you know, the songs were way over complicated. And so I eventually tried to do like, what was it? Uh, I think it was back in black or something like that. ACDC, wow. you know, and then like hell's bells. And I'm like, I was having a hard time with that even, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, Denny's guitar channel wants to know your thoughts on active versus passive pickups and what do you prefer? Mm. Well, you know, if there's anything I've noticed, it's that active pickups seem to have more like uh, more mid punch, like they're more warm. I can get more like certain, a certain tone I can get like a Michelangelo Badio tone. I feel like I get more out of that. Um, and I'm not a gear guy, so I'm probably saying this wrong. So forgive me guys. Um, but you know, we're, the passive ones sound great just the way they are. It's just a slightly different tone to me in the active pickups. So that's, that's what I've noticed at least. Yeah. And with the uh, passive pickups, you don't have to worry about having a battery in there and like, Oh, my battery died. And I don't, I need to go, you know, I need to run to Walmart to get a nine volt battery. Yeah. That would be yeah. having to have, having to be worried about that all the time. <laughs> oh, righty. Let's see. Any other questions here? Oh, Brian. Brian's Gate. What about bass lessons? No, Brian's Gate. Le Lester will not do bass lessons because only losers play bass. I'm just kidding. I'm assuming you can do bass lessons as well. Yeah, definitely. We'll we'll get you going on some bass, man. Anytime. Yep. In fact, Lester has a bass guitar because I gave him a bass guitar at Christmas time. Yep. Do you still have that? Oh yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Um, let's see here. Kicking back. Uh oh, he says not to put you on the spot, but can you show an example of something like a chord progression for D Dorian? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, man. So like Dorian progressions, like the most basic ones are like a two five type of thing. So like that would be um, doing D minor, right? And then you're going to go to G. That'd be your fifth chord. So two to five kind of thing. And I'll put the uh, guitar on. Sorry. I'll switch the echo cancellation real quick. Okay. okay. Doing uh, so. So, you know, just kind of that. It'd be better if I could play over chords at the same time. Well, there you go. See? You're kicking back. You're going to have to try harder than that to stump the amazing Lester Mitchell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Doroteo says he's always got a nine volt battery backup just in case. But Doroteo, what if you use that nine volt backup battery? Then you don't have a backup battery. As soon as you use your backup battery, then you got to go out and buy another backup battery, right? Yeah. Yeah. And William says he learned not to leave it plugged in to drain the battery. Oh, yeah. I guess if you leave your cable plugged into the jack on the guitar, that's going to be draining the battery on the active pickups. I didn't even think about that because I don't really use active pickups. So, Yeah, I made that mistake actually with the Schecter. I was leaving it plugged in and uh, my battery was like shot the next day. <laughs> I mean, the Schecter that you have now it has active pickups? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You didn't have to worry about that with your Charvel. You should have kept that Charvel, man. Can't believe yeah. you. Got rid of that for a Schecter. Mm. That's, that's what I get, man. It's my karma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Paul wants to know what kind of strings you use, what what brand, what gauge, and what tuning do you do? Standard tuning or something else? Mm. Yeah. So, you know, normally I play in standard because I kind of suck at modern things. Um, I have the Fesley drop tune to D standard just to kind of experiment right now because why not? Uh, but string wise, I'd use 10 to 46, uh, either the Ernie Ball Paradigm or I use the Clear Tones, either one of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tens, you know, um, anytime I get a guitar and it has like 10 gauge strings or sometimes maybe even heavier than that, I can instantly feel it. I don't know how you play with tens. 
it's like I get those tens are on there and it's like, man, it's harder for me to bend the notes, like to mm -hmm. do like a, uh, like a two note bend, like bending like a D note up to an E note. And it's like, if it has 10 gauge strings on there, it just feels like so much harder. Why don't you use nine gauge? Nine gauge? You know, I don't think I've ever played uh, like on nines knowingly. Um, so I might try it out sometime. I'll take your, I'll take your advice and see what it feels like. Cause I'm open to new ideas. Well, I mean, if you're happy with your tens, by all means, continue with your ten gauge. I, I don't, I want to peer pressure you into nine gauges. So the dark side. <laughs> yeah, see from Brian's gate, same thing. He says you shred with tens. Wow, exactly what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, exactly. Wow. Paul Gilbert uses eight gauge strings now. Oh dang. Yeah, exactly. And I've been, I've been curious to, uh, to try that out. So. But I haven't yet. All righty. So any more questions here? Um, Wasted Dude says he, had, he has a question for both of us. Okay, Wasted Dude, put your question in the chat. Um, yeah, Mr. JW says, 10s are light gauge for acoustic. That's true. Yeah, on my acoustic, I think I maybe I have 11 gauge or something like that. You know, Jamie, they, they probably do make rechargeable um, nine volt batteries. Mm. I would imagine they do. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, guys, we're waiting for the question from Wasted Dude. He keeps hitting. He keeps hitting the send button before he types his question. Come on, Wasted Dude, you can do it. Get that question in there. I hope you got your thinking cap on, Lester. Oh, oh be, man. I can tell this is going to be a deep question. <laughs> Maybe. Anticipation. Yeah. Yeah. Now the pressure's on. This better be a good question. It's going to be like, uh... What's your favorite fast food restaurant? Well, anyway, while we're waiting, I might as well ask that. What? Oh, nope. There's the question. There's the question. Okay. It says, Lester, I heard that some people are converting to lighter strings because it brings out the mid-range tones a little bit more than fixed dreams. What your feel, what's your feeling on that? Then fixed dreams? I wonder if that was, was that, what does that mean? Hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not the expert on like strings and, and like tones with stuff like that. So I'm, I'm pretty much the wrong guy to ask, but I will say that, you know, it's possible and I'm willing to give anything a try as far as strings go. Um, but yeah, sorry, man. I wish I had a better answer for you on that. Oh, okay. He meant to say thick strings, not fixed dreams. Oh, 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 I see. Um, He's probably typing on his phone. You know how when you're when you're typing on your phone, it like automatically changes the words. I hate when my phone does that. Oh yeah, same here, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I never did. Uh, you know, I asked that question. I still need an answer. What is your favorite fast food place? <laughs> oh man, favorite fast food place. You know, back when I could eat it without having stomach issues, I'd say like Taco Bell. That's probably why you have stomach issues. Yeah. <laughs> That's what started it. Yep. Yeah. Have you learned nothing from Metal Dude? Come on. Yeah. It's hanging out with Metal Dude, man. Getting quesaritos. That was the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So are you, uh, are you eating much healthier these days then? Yeah. You know, I, I had to fix my whole diet around, you know, I was, I think a few months ago, 200 and like, I don't know. 15 pounds or something and I'm 173. So I lost a lot of weight just cutting out like almost everything and just eating really basic, like whole food stuff, mm -hmm. uh, which just helped a little bit, but uh, yeah, I'm never going to go back down that road again of eating a bunch of uh, quesaritos or anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. All right, guys, any more questions for Lester guitar music related questions? Yeah, Jamie, let's hope Metal Dude didn't hear that. He's probably not watching right now anyway. Metal Dude's kind of a MIA at the moment. I don't know where he's been recently. 
Although I did see that video of him trying to return that seven string. What a knucklehead saying that guitar was broken. It, was, it wasn't was broken. It just had seven strings on it. And that was my guitar. I don't even know how he got it. That was crazy. Got to see Metal Dude do it like a gent thing now on the seven string. Yeah, I don't think he would know what to do with that low string. But anyway, any more questions, guys? Hmm. Yeah. Paul says uh, 7-Eleven. Yeah, he probably shouldn't be eating at 7-Eleven either. Metal Dude goes to 7-Eleven. Those are his two favorite places, like 7-Eleven and Taco Bell. Right? Hot dog and a Slurpee from 7-Eleven. Oh, man. That's great. Yeah. That's, uh, talk about a well-balanced diet. That's why That's why Metal Dude is so healthy. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lester, how about um, play us? You can do the riff or the solos or the, or the melodies or whatever um, from one of your like recent original songs. You posted a review for that guitar that you're holding right there, the Festley guitar, and you had two original songs in the video, right? Mm, yep. So play us some of like one or both of those songs. Make sure you switch off the uh, echo cancelization. Sure, no problem. Let's see here. Forgive my slow speed, guys. I'm not tech savvy. All right. Point and click. Point and click. random noodling there from uh, one of my songs <laughs> that was good that was great so which both of those songs had a title so which one were you playing just now uh, that was the angelus mortem one so just kind of weird name i picked for it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so guys if you want to hear what he was just playing but with like the full backing track with the drums and the, like the whole you know like a real song um just go to lester's channel and it's one of his most recent videos. He did the review on that Festley guitar there. Hold it up a little bit so everybody can see it. That's the Festley Black LP style guitar. So yeah, Lester did a great review on that and he did like two original songs. He was trying to one up me in the video. He's like, oh, Bald Shredder does one original jam. I'm gonna do two. So in my <laughs> next video, I'm gonna do three. Actually, I'm not. But anyway, go to Lester's channel and you'll see him shredding like a madman on that guitar. I appreciate that, man. And hey, just imagine how silly it'd be if we just made like whole albums for guitar reviews. Like, hey guys, here's like a whole 10 set album. <laughs> yep. Yeah, everybody sit down, get your drink and your popcorn. You're gonna be here for an hour as I play an entire album on this guitar that I made just for this video. Yeah, that would be insane. Um, Alan wants to know if those are active pickups in the Fesley. No, they are not active. Yeah, they're not. But they sound all right. Mm -hmm. They sound all right. Um, let us see here. NXZW says he loves that distorted sound. Mm -hmm. Hey, me too, for sure. Um, oh, Mr. Slick says, hang tags, new trend. Because you got the tag hanging from the headstock. Oh, yeah. that's funny. Hey, you yeah. know what? Don't remove the hang, hang tags when you're doing YouTube videos because you don't know how long you're going to keep that guitar. And it's like, well, if I want to sell that to somebody, I want the tag still on there. Then, Because then, you know, hey, it's a new guitar. It's got the tags on it still, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And also, I like the little... Uh, it's not little, like they get in the way. 
I like the little chord chart they put on there too. So like, you know, sometimes they give guitars out to like some of my students, you know, and uh -huh. this is kind of a neat little chord chart. So I thought if I leave that on there, they might find it useful if they, you know, are just beginners or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If, you, if you're a beginner and you don't know how to, where to put your fingers for those chords and it's right there hanging from the headstock. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, guys, um, I think we're about ready to wrap it up here. So I'm going to wait a, another minute or so because of the delay in the chat. If anybody has any final comments or any final questions, now is the time to get it in the chat because we're going to finish up here, guys. Um, anyway, while we're waiting for any final comments and stuff, Lester, I want to uh, say thank you for um, so much for joining me in the live stream. Thank you for enjoy for agreeing to join me in the madness. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, thanks for having me, man. It's uh, it's an honor to be here. You know, I appreciate you inviting me on and for giving me a shout out and everything, man. Very much appreciated. Yeah, definitely. Well, I appreciate you being here. Um, so real quick on the questions, where was it? Uh, Multi Revelator said, would a Super Strat be a bad choice for a first, first guitar? If it has a Floyd Rose, yes, because you don't want a, like a person who's just starting having to mess with the Floyd. Is, is, you know, they break a string. It's hard to change strings on the Floyd Rose. It's. I would not recommend a Super Strat with a Floyd Rose. If it doesn't have a Floyd Rose, then it should be fine. Uh, let's see. Any other final questions here? Um. People, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. I was late to the chat. Hey, Riff Lord, but you made it. The Black Monsoon is back on Amazon. Okay, cool. So anyway, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for everybody that joined us on the live stream. Rob and Callie, as usual, you rock, dude. Thank you so much for that super chat. It is much appreciated. And um, yeah, that about does it. So again, guys. Head over to the Lester Mitchell YouTube channel. Subscribe. Do it as soon as we're done here. Go over there, subscribe, start watching his videos, and be a regular viewer of his channel. And as a reminder, guys, I've got a new guitar review video coming out tomorrow. And my usual live stream on Wednesday, coming up in a few days, I'm going to have another special guest. It's going to be Mike from Fulton Street Beats. Ooh. And we'll be talking all about the chips and stuff because he is like the chips and king on YouTube. So anyway, all right. So yeah, that about wraps it up. Let's see here. Any last thing? Any last thing? Okay. Hello, Isis. I got to say hi to uh, Mercury's daughter, Isis. All right, guys. So that's it. We're done. What do you think, Lester? Awesome. A lot of fun. Again, thanks for having me, man. Yep. Okay, guys, I'm going to do a countdown. It's going to be a five-second countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Later, guys. <laughs>